hope everybody's year has started lovely. Um, it is Veganuary, the best time of the year <laughs> when people are making the change to go from abusing animals to not abusing animals. Amazing. So yeah, I thought I'd share a little story of me seeing my mum for the first time and our little vegan Christmas, which was lovely. And this was the first time I was seeing as a vegan too, which is which was really exciting. I actually filmed a video when I was first seeing her and I think I just didn't press record because <laughs> it's not on the camera. So, uh, but yeah, it was really exciting, like unbelievable. Um, to see her for the first time in two years is so, so exciting. And I was just um, so happy to see her. She was really happy to see me. And it was lovely. I had made her a little bed in our living room. Like you can see, well, you can't really see, but this is a, it's a house, <laughs> it's, it's not big. Um, so, you know, we, we just live in a one, one bed flat. So I'd made her a little bed on the, on the floor with a Christmas tree and stuff. So. That was really nice. Um, she really, you know, she was happy to be here and I made her a little, yeah, a little bed so she could feel all homely. She bought, bought so many treats uh, from Finland, which was so nice. I love the Finnish um, food. Well, not all of it, but you know, there's a lot of things that I do miss that you can't get here. So yeah, she actually had to isolate for four days, waiting for her PCR to come back. It was meant to be like a 24 seven hour service. And um, because of Christmas and you know, the weekend, it, it just took a lot longer. So, but it was nice. We ended up having a lot of like this time at home, watching Christmas films and it was really, really sweet. I had a really nice time. Uh, she actually brought me some diaries back uh, from when I was uh, little, like, you know, like preschool diaries and things. And there was this picture of me um, <laughs> as a little girl watching somebody because we had like these farm people come over and they would kind of show us like, oh, this is a sheep and you know, this is, this is whatever. And there was like a picture of me as like a five-year-old or six-year-old watching this uh, guy like milk a goat. And it's just, it just made me think how it's such a like big process, like how, how all this time, uh, like, you know, from since we're little, we just thought this is what, um, this is what's normal. And she actually brought some, um, books back as well from when I was little, which um, just made me so upset because there was like a little, um, it was like an ABC farm, but well, it wasn't like a farm book, but it was like an ABC like poem book. And then there was like little poems and you know, it was just like, oh, we love all cows, we love all sheep. And I'm like, mm, you kill them though, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, it's, just, it's just everywhere. But yeah, no, like when I was watching that guy, when I was little uh, to milk the goat, I would have, they would have not said like, oh yeah, like this, this goat is having milk because it's for their baby, but they're not with their baby. So that's um, really upsetting. Uh, obviously it, it would have never occur occurred to me, but I think because of these like examples, it's just, these are just two little things, but there's so much that we get thought when we're younger, you know, to normalize it all. So obviously the reason why any animal makes milk is for their babies, which would have been the case here, obviously same as in dairy, which is something I learned as an adult. Like I don't even think that my parents knew that you have to forcibly impregnate a cow and then take the baby away almost as soon as they're born. It's not a secret though, like if you look into it, like even, if, it don't even you don't have to look properly into it, but if you look like, oh, how, how what happens in the dairy industry, they do, it's not, as, it's not something they're trying to uh, hide, but kind of is, like they won't say about it in any adverts, they won't say about it anywhere, but it is it's out there, it's, it's like just information that you can find, but it obviously makes sense that any animal makes milk, because it's for the babies. Like it makes perfect sense, but when you've always been thought that, oh, like cows make milk, it's for their milk, they have milk for us, then you just think, oh yeah, it's a fact because everyone around you thinks that it's the truth. So yeah, obviously if a human would have got forcibly impregnated, we would call that rape. <laughs> and then if you take the child away, that would be called kidnapping. So this is what just this is just what happens in the dairy industry. But yeah, because this was like a play farm situation, obviously a petting farm. Uh, don't know if all those animals would get killed, but um, anything if you go for go to the shop and you buy in milk, that is what happens. And also all the dairy cows, they only last about five years. Uh, they would normally live about 15 to 20, uh, but they never get the chance to because they just get too exhausted from the process of uh, the rape and the taking the child away. Because obviously they want to be with the child. They do that once a year every time, so they will have one 
and, and had a calf once a year. It, when you go to a shop and you pick um, a carton of milk or a, or a yogurt, you don't really think that oh, this, this was a, a product of exploitation. But it was, unfortunately. Uh, but the fortunate thing is that you don't have to buy it. You can go and buy a different milk or you don't, you don't need to really drink milk at all, to be honest. Um, it's not like it's something we need. Um, you know, you can get all the calcium and whatever from from plants and it's not really, not not a big deal. Uh, they obviously don't want us to think that, they want us to think we need it. And uh, I was also thought as a child, I would have to always have a glass of milk with my food and it was like, you know, you need that. Like, I hated it, I never liked milk. Um, I always, always hated it, but I would force myself to drink it. Me and my brother both, we'd like look at each other and we'd be like, mm, gross, and then just like, push through it and it's so sad because obviously it's not something we need obviously calcium is something we need but you can get that from plenty of uh, plant sources and it's not something we need you know it's what children have children have milk <laughs> like babies have milk and then after that we don't need it if you want to say like oh my country does a different uh, down in the description we have Dominion, which is an uh, Australia uh, documentary which shows how it's like in the farms. We have a UK one. Everyone in the UK likes to think, oh, we have really high welfare standards. Mm, okay, interesting, <laughs> interesting. But uh, yeah, it's how it's how it's like. And uh, I don't think there's a Finland documentary. There is documentaries for every country, I think, like at least little video clips, but I don't exactly know every country's um, documentaries but it's just standard practice. If you go, if you live in a country that has a supermarket, you're most likely buying things from factory farms. So sorry to break it to you, but that's how it's like. And even if not, any, any animals that are from eggs or dairy industry, they will all get killed in the end. So it doesn't matter if they had a nice life, which uh, they probably didn't anyway, but even if they did, even if they lived on Dartmoor, they lived anywhere, you can imagine they still don't want to get killed at the fraction of their age. Just think about that next time you go to a supermarket and buy something. But um, yeah, it might feel like it's hard for us to make the change, but my mom changed when she was 56. So if you've uh, lived all your life eating animal products, anything is hard to change. Imagine how hard it is, would th you would think it is to change for someone that much older, but she actually didn't even find it hard. Um, you know, she, there was maybe a first week or something that she was like a bit unsure what to buy and stuff, but there's so much help online, like there's just so much help and, and it just you just go to the shops and there are things, it's easily labeled and you know, it's, it's just so easy nowadays. So if my oh, um, 57 year old mum could do it, I think you can too. Anyway, back to nice things. First off, we went to my favorite um, cafe in Plymouth. It's a completely vegan cafe called Power Plant. And we went there to have some uh, coffee and some sandwiches. And um, my mum was just so excited to leave the house, uh, first of all, because she had not been out for the four days. So, um, yeah, she was really excited to be there and it was nice and she absolutely just loved it. So the next morning we started the morning with rice porridge, which is like a very traditional Finnish thing that you have on Christmas morning. It's kind of like rice pudding, but it's made on a hob and it takes like an hour to make and then you burn almond in there and then whoever gets the almond gets a wish and you can't tell the wish because otherwise it won't come true. So yeah, so we started the morning with some rice porridge um, and we had some kluggy, which is like um, a Finnish a uh, Christmas drink, like a hot drink, and watching snowman, and this is like my favorite, um, I think it's my favorite Christmas tradition. The morning, you know, you're having the porridge, watching snowman, and uh, drinking cluggy. It's just my favorite, favorite thing to do, so it's just so nice that we could still do it um, here in England. And obviously with my mum, because my mum's the best and it was just amazing to have her here. So then the next thing, we went to Dartmoor. My mum has never been to Dartmoor before, so, and it's not normally something we'd do on a Christmas day. I like to have quite like a chilled out Christmas. And this time I just, we, we just, because uh, obviously mum had to be in for such a long time, we then just decided to use this time to go and explore a little bit. Yeah, we saw some 
sheep in the woods. Obviously, they all get killed as well, like I said before. But it was it was unusual. We saw some deer too. They were really, really cute. You can actually get a family hunting experience in Dartmoor. Uh, it's just, uh, can we just leave the animals alone? That'd be great. Uh, that's all I want for Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> Then we had a little break uh, with tofurkey sandwiches that we made and took took with us um, and yeah it was really really lovely uh, so when we got home we started getting things ready for christmas we'd actually done everything in advance we did everything on the day before like made all the food all we had to do now was to put this uh finished carrot box <laughs> in the in the oven all the finished christmas food is weird like it's odd for sure i love it there's some finnish people who actually like hate it and they won't even eat it at christmas but in finland we always eat christmas food only at christmas like in england they'll have a roast and that's pretty much the same all year round but in finland this food is it literally only christmas food so we that's what we did we had some food you know to put in the oven and we just did a big tidy and it's kind of my dad a little bit we actually forgot to film and take any pictures the whole time my friends were here and for for all of it which was just so funny that i have this like clip of me tidying up but not like a, even one picture with my friend but it was so nice we had food together we did some um reusable crackers that i bought the year before uh, we actually put some like little things in there like we put a question and we put a little memory and a joke obviously and um yeah it was just lovely like we just went one by one um everyone asking like you know we had different like little questions there and and it was really nice just like really lovely cozy time and i just loved it so nice to have a christmas without any dead birds on the table any dead pigs on the table and definitely um just yeah just it was the one of my favorite christmases um on like in my adult age i just loved loved it but yeah there's links in the description to sign up for veganuary and then you know if that's you who's vegan and whose family isn't you can encourage them to do this just for the for the month and then hopefully they'll um keep going and then maybe that can be you next christmas having a vegan christmas together with your family but i know it's not that simple it's more about how ready the next like the person is to actually care about animal abuse and if they don't care it's impossible for you to make them to care. Obviously you can have loads of conversations like I did with my mum. Um, and I've had loads of conversations with my friends and family too. And uh, she's the only one who's gone vegan this far. So, you know, um, don't take it personal if it doesn't work. But anyway, there's links uh, down, down there for, um, for Veganuary and Challenge 22 and Vegani Hasta for the Finnish people uh, is free. So you can sign up all year round. Veganuary is not just a January thing. I know it sounds like it is, but it's not. Um, you can do it literally in March or June or whenever. Uh, but it's really good because you know they've got lots of lots of recipes and help. Let me know if you're doing veganery, if you've encouraged someone to do veganery with you, or if you're vegan and you've got someone to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video about my time with my mum here. Please like and subscribe, it would be really really helpful for me. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.